lovely a Monday morning here at the Path to Profit Academy. Hello, I'm Dr. Manette Riordan, along with my husband, Brad Dobson. We are the co-founders of the Path to Profit Academy. And in this podcast, we like to share stories of other successful entrepreneurs, the journeys they've been on, why they're so passionate about work that they're doing, and what have they got coming up that's really exciting, what have they learned along the way. And our guest today is Molly Mandelberg. Welcome, Molly. Hi, thanks for Hi. having me. We're excited to have you. So we always start the show with a quote. So I'm going to share the quote, and then we're going to tell you all a little bit more about Molly and what we're going to talk about today. So the quote is, do just once what others say you can't do, and you will never pay attention to their limitations again, by James R. Cook. Their limitations. Yes. I like that one. So do just once what others say you can't do, and you will never pay attention to their limitations again. I think I've heard ruder versions of that one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that one, and I think, Molly, it reminded me of one of the things I admire most about you is your spirit of adventure, and how much you've traveled, and how you just love to go, and do, and be, and so it just really reminded me that you are someone who never lets other people's limitations hold you back. Thank you. My I perspective. That. Yes. Yeah, I, I love that quote. Yeah, awesome. Why don't you share yeah. a little bit about it's, Molly? It, it's hard enough when we have our own limiting beliefs right? <laughs> and other people's limiting beliefs on yes. Cool. Okay, real quick about Molly. Molly is a tech-savvy strategist supporting coaches, light workers, change makers, and visionaries to expand their businesses in a way that allows them to reach more people and make more money with less time spent. She is known for taking the overwhelm out of big, exciting projects so that they can be birthed into the world and received by those who need them. I love Perfect. that. Yes. <laughs> so you techies can totally geek out on <laughs> the technology. Like every email I get from Molly lately, because Molly and I are planning an event together, is, oh my God, I love Kajabi. Oh my God, I love Kajabi. <laughs> <laughs> got all your tasks in there, do you? I've got some good stuff, yeah, cooked up in there. It's, it's a pretty fun um, tool to utilize once you learn how to use all the different little pieces of it. Yeah, you know, it... it um, uh, so I'm I'm just over a year out from or a year and a quarter I guess from from a long software career, and um, the last few years were were spent using Jira for our um, for our task management management for agile planning, and uh, I guess a few months ago I got Manette on the bandwagon with it, signed us up, and uh, it's really helping get back to a weekly focus and a daily focus. Um, and just get those tasks out of our heads. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. Kajabi probably gives you the same type of thing. Yeah, I mean, I use Kajabi more for like sales pages and opt-in pages and um, membership sites and building things like that. It's more for my- um, Content management. Content management oh. and list building. But I use Trello for oh. a project manager and I love that. And I know what you mean, once you have things in the right system, I feel like everything gets easier. That's definitely one of my Favorite. <laughs> well, I keep telling her. <laughs> Put the system together so you don't We're have to speak his language. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, oh my God, I'm in love with Molly already. She hasn't even said to me that the word systems. He's like, oh, thank you. <laughs> but it takes a creative brain to do it too because, I mean, there's so many different aspects to it that need to be, um, that need to be thought of and implemented and, and, and integrated, I think. So I'd love for you to share a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey over the last couple of years since I've known you. So some of that evolution, right, of how, where you started and how you got so clear about helping people create leverage in their business, which is what you're mostly focused on today, right? Yeah, yeah. And I feel so blessed to have people like you in my life who have witnessed that journey because um, it's easy to get stuck in the moment or stuck in what I'm working on or planning for the future and to realize that I've come a long way and there's still like, there's still places I want to get to, but, um, that clarity that I was always wishing for is somewhere I feel like I've sort of arrived now, which yeah. is such a blessing. But yeah, it wasn't always, it wasn't always like that for me <laughs> to use that trite phrase. Um, <laughs> that I was a wandering gypsy for a really long time, selling my art to travel around the world and um, not selling a lot of it. So really <laughs> having a fun time um, with my tenacity and my, um, my, you know, ability to make the most of very little. And I sort of happened to um, 
be interested in things that led me into business. So I was really fascinated with um, hypnosis and hypnotherapy and past life regression therapy. And that's really what I started my business doing. And over the course of a few years, I sort of kept narrowing my focus and trying a new direction and really allowing my heart and my feeling of alignment to dictate where I went next. And it actually, I was getting pretty close to um, knowing what I wanted to do. And every time I would switch my niche, I would create a new course and build a new funnel. And I would, um, you know, rewrite my signature talk. And I would develop all this content and build all these things every single time that finally <laughs> one of my friends <laughs> sat me down and well, said, hey, this is what you're good at. And this is what we need your help with. So why don't you do that? And I was like, no one's going to pay me for that. That's, that's not something people need. Like that's the fun stuff. And it took her saying, no, we need you for that. For me to realize that that was part of my genius and having the creative background and the woo woo spiritual background only made it easier to do what I do best for the people that I want to surround myself with, with, which are the coaches and the healers and the people who know they're here for a reason and they're on a mission um, to change the world and to help others. And that means that not only do I get to do the creative stuff and the tech stuff and the nerdy stuff, but I get to do it with people that are like hugely inspiring and that just light me up every day. So that's sort of a the whole roundabout way to say that I'm really passionate about what I'm doing now. And it was a fun road getting here. Yeah, I love that. And I think it's, um, it's, I love, cause I watched, so Molly and, and I met in a coaching program called Thrive Academy that we're both members of, and, and I've watched your journey. And when I met you, I just remember being so excited. There was another creative in the program because there aren't very many of us in there actually. Yeah. And so I was so excited to meet you and to hear what you are doing and to hear about the journey and to watch you come to this clarity, because I think the biggest gift that we can bring to creatives is how to straddle the creative and the structural, because it takes both to be successful. Right. And Brad helps me straddle that, but you do it all by yourself, which is pretty brilliant. So I love that you love the technology. And it also really, I think, um, I think we get caught up in our big why sometimes thinking that we have to do something on such a grand scale to have the impact we want. And what I'm realizing more and more is that Molly, every time you touch one of those leaders and change makers and help them get their course out, that you're touching everybody they touch. And so helping entrepreneurs realize that um, our reach is much more exponential than we ever think it is, right? And that's such a fun place to be is that by helping one woman launch one course that may reach a hundred or a thousand or a million, you've impacted that, right? In such a powerful way. Yeah. And every life that's changed by that, everyone they come across is impacted by it. Yeah. So I like thinking about that ripple effect as having a bigger splash, like making a splash. Yeah. And the more that we recognize like doing your passion and, and rocking your business and being supported by it while also being fed by the creative side of it, um, that's how you make the impact. And that is definitely going to spill out into so many different, um, into different people's lives because it can't help but to do that. We're all so connected. And I, I mean, I see this internally in our business and, and also with our clients. Um, there's just such a huge struggle out there for people to be even remotely systematic about what they do in their business. Um, yeah. the people that you're targeting, the, the coaches, the healers, um, they're called, they have that brilliant vision to help people, but translating that into, um, into day to day business type activities is a real struggle for them. Yeah. Right. I think people see it as adding stuff they don't want to do to their schedule when really, if you put the right couple things in place, that stuff doesn't have to be on your schedule anymore, or it could just. So what would you say are the right couple of things for people that are listening? What's what do you feel like it's really important to have in place to start creating that impact? Yeah, so automation anywhere you can have it. So automating, <laughs> yeah, automating your your creative output. Like if there's 
social media posting that you need to happen, like put it on a day and make two hours once a month be the day and then set it all up. Like yesterday, I set up my social media posts for a month and a half. And while that might seem like, you know, it's, it's contrived or it's like prefabricated or it's like fake in some way because of that on the business end of the spectrum, I think it's, it's smart. It's like one way that I get to be visible. I get to be showing up in people's lives. I get to be sharing my message and my mission and my, you know, vision without having to worry about it every day. Yeah. And like, I'm about to take a month vacation, which I've built my business to allow me to do that easily. And it's because I have this automation in place. My newsletters are going to be going out because they're set up to go out automatically. So you got to tell everybody where you're going. Wait, wait, a, this a is month? Really cool. You're so going cool. for a month? And what so it's funny mean? because I say a month, but it's actually like a month and a half that I'm going to be away from home because I've set up my, ver my business to be totally remote capable. Sure. Um, so a month, Two weeks, I'm going to be off the grid completely. Um, I'm going to be on a writer's retreat crossing the Atlantic. And then oh, I'm going to be right. in England for about a week and a half. So five days in London and a week in the Cotswolds. And that's with a group of writers that actually my mother puts together every year. Um, and so we get a lot of writing done. And we also get a lot of feedback and critiquing um, in the evenings, which is awesome. And then when I get back, I'm doing a five-week road trip where I'm going to be speaking um, over... A, a, a few different states. I want to say all over the country, but really it's like three different states, but I'm not going to minimize it either. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and running my business from the road, because really if I have internet and I've set up those daily tasks to be automated, so I don't have to worry about them all the time, there's no reason I can't be doing what I do from absolutely anywhere. And that is a huge dream come true for the traveling gypsy Molly that once was. Yeah. yeah, and still is, right? I think um, I think you're such a beautiful example of what it looks like to be kind of that struggling all over the map, wanting to travel, needing to travel, but not really having a plan for that. And um, what I know from your story also is that while you were traveling, you did all kinds of jobs, like any job you could get to be able to travel more. Yeah. And so your commitment to that part of your life was always very present, right? And so I love to see you're just channeling that commitment in a different way now, but the gypsy is still there. Right? Oh, the gypsy is totally still there, yeah. Yeah, totally still there. And I'm super excited because I get to be part of that interstate speaking tour. Yeah. So and I are hosting, and Brad will be there too, awesome. and uh, are hosting a one-day event called Creative Freedom in Action. It'll be somewhere in North LA area. We're still working on figuring out the best location for that. But Molly and I are going to be combining our talents and passions for creativity and systems into a one-day event. Do you want to say more about it? Yeah, so I do a lot of that nerdy tech stuff to help people get automated and get their programs and courses out. And Manette has, you know, a beautifully uh, matched but complementary approach to helping creative people really get their business um, set up in a way that that they're successful. So I feel like we're going to both feed the creative people and the need for um, elevated business, client attraction, um, automated systems, and, and really living, uh, living as an entrepreneur with as much of you and your like true essence involved in it. So I'm really excited. Creative freedom in action is like a beautiful melding of our two one day events. So I'm excited to see, um, to see what we create because I know we make awesome stuff happen yeah. and to see who shows up because, um, the kinds of community that we both bring together are really powerful and incredible people. So I'm excited to see who we get to meet that weekend. That's how I always feel after our summits, you know, everybody that's listening knows we just hosted one of our three day summits. It's like, we attract really cool people right? It's like the yeah. podcast, it's everything that we do, right? It's like, wow, we attract really cool people. I mean, hopefully that means that we're kind of okay ourselves. That's right. <laughs> I think it does. It's but the, but the, the thing about just, um, I think it's clarity around niche, right? I think it's clarity around who you're called to serve. And when you're crystal clear and you're attracting those people and they're basically a reflection or a part of you, then it can't not be fun, right? And I think that's the other thing that I think I've become so much more clear about and Brad's always been a big part of that is it has to be fun 
right? It has to have the gypsy, the adventure, the creativity, and the systems make all of that possible. But even the systems themselves have to be fun and playful or we're never going to do it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Manette told me about, about what you guys had talked talk through and, and started planning. And uh, I was definitely excited. It, it's it, like you said, it, it really is a, a neat match of uh, bringing together of skill sets. And uh, yeah, for our listeners, y- you need all of these things. <laughs> you really do. <laughs> and and your, your chance to, uh, to put your vision forth at its fullest. Uh, I, I kid you not, a huge part of it comes from having those systems in place. Um, it allows you to be more creative. It allows you to be more of yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, so fantastic opportunity. So yes. let's talk a little bit about the concept of leverage because it's one that people dream about and say they want, but it's not that simple. You don't usually get to start your business with a leverage model. You usually grow into a leverage model. So share a little bit about what your idea is about leverage and how to create that. Yeah, I think the main reason that people don't do it, even though they want to and even though they need to sometimes, is because there are a lot of moving parts and that there's a lot of little pieces to put in place and to connect for it to feel smooth and for it to feel supportive and and, um, creative too. And I think that the key is really one step at a time. Like get the resources, get the support, get the right um, tech and stuff in place, but focus on one thing at a time, whether that's creating a free gift or whether that's like learning how to have a list and how to use it. Just try to do one thing at a time because when you put all of the stuff on your plate and say, okay, I'm doing this, it can get overwhelming and then it just stays on the list, you know, it stays on the list and not in action. So putting one thing in action at a time is how you're definitely going to move forward. And I think that's with any big vision in life, that as long as you're energetically believing it's possible and putting one small step forward every day, um, (laughs) yeah. That, that's how that's how it'll happen. It's so beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so great to hear you say all this because it's what we teach our, our clients as well. So I love hearing that reflected back. But give us some examples of what a leveraged business model might include because you mentioned a couple of different things like an opt-in, there's email marketing, there's courseware. Yeah. So how do you recommend people kind of start when they're trying to really create a leveraged business model? Yeah, so the idea is that you get off the time for money merry-go-round. So there's some way that people are going to be giving you money without you directly one-on-one giving them your time. So that can be an online course, that can be a, you know, a, a video training series, that can be a webinar, that can be um, a big group program, it could be a one-day event like we're hosting where you're reaching more than one person at a time. But the simplest like starting point is having your list set up and having a free gift that people can automatically receive when they opt into your list. And from there, um, I teach it in three parts. So it's opt-in, promised content, and then a next step. So when someone opts into your list, they receive the free gift they were promised. And then you say, hey, would you like to come to this class or purchase this home study program? Or would you like to, um, you know, get on the phone with me and then potentially join my big group program. And by setting things up in those three piece sequences, uh, there's always a next step and there's always a way for people to dive deeper with you. And when you have that in place, the end point is a higher value coaching or one-on-one work because they've already received so much value and trust and built so much connection um, over the course of them receiving things from you that it's, it's easier to charge more for your services and they're already enrolled in wanting to work with you by the time that they get there. So it's really um, even just a couple things in place, like even just a newsletter that eventually offers them the next step is a way of adding value and building that connection and building that trust with them. 
That's just what we were talking about this morning. I was going to say, that's what we spent our whole sprint meeting talking about this morning was what's next, right? Because we have funnels in place to fill our summits. We have funnels in place to fill our online course. And we know we could be doing a better job with our email marketing, right? And really how we're nurturing and building that community, right? As the, the list is growing nicely, but they need to be nurtured. And I, it's one of my favorite questions that I make my clients ask, and I need to remember to have us ask that too. It's always asking what's next, right? It's like looking at this beautiful journey that your customer goes on from where they are when they meet you and where they say they want to be and how every step just takes them a little bit further on that journey. Right. Uh, yeah. Customers, once, once you've engaged your ideal client, they just want to know what they should do next, right? Yeah. They don't, they don't even want to question. They, they, want, they want you to tell them what to do next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As you and I know, being a business owner can be overwhelming because you have so many options. So I'd love for you to share, because I know this is totally your genius. What are you seeing that's really working right now for opt-in gifts? What are some popular ideas that seem to be converting really well? Yeah, I think as long as it's an easy click and it's something they want, not just need, um, the things that I see, I'll start on the negative and then go to the positive. The things I see not working are when we as intuitive beings and, um, you know, smart people decide the one thing that's going to solve this problem for this person is this. And because we know it's what they need, we package it and we say, here, you need this. Yeah. But the problem is if they don't explicitly want it, if they haven't been sitting there thinking, if only I had the answer to this then they're never going to opt in. They're never going to say, yes, that's for me. Um, they have to explicitly know that it's what they need and what they want before they'll say yes to it. So um, the trick is really doing the research, surveying your list, surveying your audience to find out what in their words is what they're looking for, and then making that the entry point, making that the free gift. Because we can make up so many things in our head, but the truth is the way that they're talking about it is really, um, that's the marketing goal. That's really where they're going to say yes to it. That's, that's such excellent marketing advice mm -hmm. and a good reminder to us too, because I think we've fallen into that trap a few times. Uh, yeah. it's so well, I've done it wrong plenty of times too. <laughs> yeah, right. We, have we to all have, right? I think we all go through that before we figure that piece out. Yeah, we have to remember to... to um, to think about what we have to get inside their heads yeah. and remember what their pain points are. Yeah. Right. I just found this awesome article on Forbes about doing a new form of a total deep dive into creating your persona, they call it, your ideal client, your avatar profile, whatever, that is like um, covers the thinking, feeling parts in a whole different way than the way I think it's been taught before. It, it would take a lot of research to do it. And um, we'll post it in the link to the show notes for everybody that's listening. But Molly and I can both go down the rabbit hole of like knowing who your client is is so important. And for me, Molly, I don't know how you teach this, but it's looking at the one person. Like I don't care about the niche conversation so much as really helping people understand who's that one perfect person. Because when you know who they are, then marketing is easy. You know where to find them. You know what to say to them. You know what they need, what they want. But that distinction you made between need versus want is so powerful. And I especially see this in the coaching and holistic practitioner marketplace is we know we can help them, right? We know what's in the way, but it doesn't matter what we know or think or what we want to teach. We also tend as artists that we just want to create, right? And we're like, oh, I'll just build it and then, you know, pray that they'll come. And business just doesn't work that way. And so I loved how you said it's really understanding what's in their head. Mm -hmm. And when we speak to what's in their head and it resonates with them, and then we can get them in the door, and then we can add those pieces we know they need. But exactly, yeah. want it. sneak it in later. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. The stealth transformation, right? It's like yeah. you got to get them in the door. Like for us, one of the things that we've noticed is that what people need is money mindset work, but what they want is marketing help, right? So we use marketing as that point of entry or sales as a point of entry or planning as a point of entry. And then we know that we're going to have to help them with money mindset along the way. So I'm curious, what do you know your customers need and what do they say they want? They need, uh, well, they need a free gift. They need 
a list. They need um, a system in place that will allow them to output content easily and effortlessly. Mm -hmm. And what they want is, um, you know, they want a money machine. They want something that's spitting out cash right now. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, easy and effortless and what my job is to help them do that with as much ease as possible so yeah. that yeah down the road they don't need a person like me to help them anymore because it's just humming and jiving and spitting out cash the way it's supposed to that's what we want yeah and so you know we can speak to our own experience and i know you can too we just launched a, a whole new funnel with you know facebook ad to lead magnet to webinar to course and it took us three months just to get ready for the launch Right? I think people don't really uh, understand how much time it takes and how much technology it takes to get all those pieces technology. in place. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, I think you guys are probably doing it in more depth on the front end because you've done it a few other ways before. <laughs> yeah, we did it all the lazy ways or the not yeah. having no ways. Right, and I think that one of, the, one of the struggles we face is setting something up and then it doesn't spit out money and we say, well, it must be a dud and we start over from scratch. Yeah. When the truth is, it just needs time to be finessed. And when you give it the time to be finessed, then you can actually start having a money-making machine because you have to reword the ad and you have to maybe rename the gift and maybe, you know, change how they get to point C or whatever it is. Um, but when you just build it, launch it and toss it, then you're not giving yourself the time to really see it start converting. Um, which is advice. Advice. And creatives, we love the creative part so much. It's right. And then we just toss it and want to start over. Right. I don't know about you, but I struggle with the finessing piece. Yeah. Right. And yet I'm seeing how important that is. Yeah. It takes some, it takes some, yeah, stamina, I guess, to keep working on the same thing. Yeah. It's so important though. And we've certainly made that mistake and, and, and it, it's cool because the, the system we haven't, we put in place now, we've, we, we, purchased a, a service where they help, they worked beside us, a done with you type of service. And uh, it's just very clear about um, how split testing and, uh, and tweaking are a critical part of the, the whole process. So once you have it all nailed up, you're not done. Yeah, right. Then you it's time down. to start uh, polishing and, and all of that type of stuff so that it can truly um, unless it, unless you just chose the wrong thing to sell, um, you, you have, you have to give it an opportunity. It's one of those devil in the details type of things. Totally. And getting feedback every step of the way, like yeah. talking to your people, what about this did or didn't resonate with you? Like how would, what parts of this worked for you and what parts of it weren't quite there for you? Right. That right. feedback and then implementing that when you, when you tweak again. That's so great you said that. So we um, are huge fans of a podcast called Smart Passive Income by Pat Flynn. He's one of our heroes about this stuff. And he did um, a beta test of a new course that he launched recently. And it was fascinating to listen to him share the story of how he tested every step of the way in the beta test and how we were able or how he was able to really see where people were getting stuck because he wanted to. So it's great to talk about money machines, but for me, from an integrity perspective, I don't just want a money machine. I want a money machine that helps people, right? And so does Pat Flynn. And so he went through every step of the course and he paid attention to where people got stuck because they can't buy what's next if they're still stuck at mm -hmm. a certain point in your process. So that finessing part isn't just in that upfront sales part, but it's in the delivery as well. And so I'm curious, what have some of your learning experiences been this year as you've launched your group programs and started with your own money machine? Yeah, definitely noticing where people get stuck in the middle of a course and what can I do to support them maybe before the course begins so that they feel more ready for that third week when it comes? Or how can I perhaps lengthen the middle of the program so that that time they need to flesh out some content makes them ready for the next step? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and watching people interact with your stuff is definitely like the number one way to start seeing where 
where it's working and you can't do all the finessing in the before launching, you know, yeah. it's gotta be that you put something out in the world and then see where, where it's serving people and where it's not meeting them. And I'm glad you brought that up because I don't just sell a money machine. I sell the heart centered sales funnel. <laughs> I'm so much more concerned with us making the impact that we're here to make and the money and the time and the automation and the ease. That's the bonus. But really, it's about us reaching the people on a bigger scale who are waiting for these things to come up, come in their lives and, and shift for them. Um, so I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, well, it's such a fun part of the conversation, I think, because um, I don't know that any of either of us are attracting clients who just want money machines. I think they want ease and I think they want their life back. Right, and they don't want to have to work so hard. But um, I do think that we both are attracting people who are called to make a difference. And so I'm curious, what's your big why? My big why? Yeah, why are you doing all this? I really think that we need to be a, col a collective community as a society. And the more people we have out there connecting, and allowing others to drop their baggage and connect deeply with everyone else in their lives, the more that we're going to shift into the kind of world that I want to be living in. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of my personal mission. And my big why is that I'm tired of seeing the people who can make that shift struggle with the details. Mm -hmm. And if I can help them get over the details so they can make their big splash and their big impact, then that's what I want to do. I love that. Very nice. Beautiful. It's a great yeah. vision. Yeah. I don't think I could have rolled off my big Y off my tongue. <laughs> I put a lot of thought in Maybe that. I need to practice that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we have been practicing that and, and working on the vision and the mission and the, and that big Y, you know, and I always say it's like when that comes to the big Y, it's a little different than vision and mission. It's the thing that gets you out of bed every morning right? Because business is hard. There's parts of it that are challenging and time consuming. And there's parts that are easy and flowy and graceful. And it's a roller coaster ride most of the time to be an entrepreneur. And if that big why isn't big enough, then it's so easy to give up, right? To not have the stamina to finesse. And so if we can remember what really is the change that we're called to make, it's so much easier to keep going even when you're stuck in that finesse mode, which for creatives is not a fun place to be, right. right? It's like, I would love to have it all just up and running and just done. And I think this was challenging for Brad too, coming from a project-based environment in corporate to being entrepreneurs where nothing is ever done. Right. It's never complete, right? There is just constantly tweaking, performing, creating new content. So it's a lot of creativity, right? Constant iteration, generation, yeah. Yeah new stuff to, and constantly pulling people in. And like he said on the website, when he was putting up the path to profit academy.com website, he's like, I just want it to be done. Right. And there's no such thing as websites being done. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's true. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So um, what's been kind of some of your biggest lessons that you've learned in these last couple of years as you've been on this path? Um, that, the biggest one is that we can do more together, yeah. that we can go further and f bigger and make a way more impactful difference in the world with a team and a tribe that my old way of being was so fabulously independent that I was, you know, and as a solopreneur, someone doing her business on her own, it's like, it was perfect for me because I do it all on my own anyway, you know? But when I started really allowing myself to sink into community and to get feedback, get support, ask for help when I needed it, get resources from mentors, the more that I sink into um, and like swim in community, the more my business has skyrocketed. Yeah. Because I have that team behind me, because I have that tribe that believes in me and not just believes that I can do it, but shows me it's possible by doing it first. Yeah. And so it's like, there's this, yeah, this confidence that comes from knowing how possible it is that you wouldn't get that by yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
It's like that's, that's why it's a great lesson. Yeah, we all try to build the community because we know that how important that support system is. And it's not just us teaching people, it's them connecting with each other in the room and in the group and in the program. I always say that where women gather, magic happens. Mm -hmm. Like you get yeah. enough of the right people in the room and anything is possible. And so I loved what you said about, because uh, I am actually, both of us are those fiercely independent people and learning how to reach out and ask for support from colleagues and collaborators, but also investing in our businesses. You know, these are, you're looking at three people, if you're or listening to the three of us today, we've all invested heavily in our yeah. own training, coaching is <laughs> heavily, yeah. like hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? And it, coaching and yeah. training. It's not just the skills we gained that changed things either. It's yeah. the fact that we invested in ourselves that changed things. In my, at least in my experience, when I made the choice to play a bigger game by paying for what I needed, yeah. my entire story about money had to change because of that moment. Yeah, um, yeah I, I get that totally. The last year has been a lot about that type of mindset change for me. Um, yeah, and it's because I, or at least for me, making that change was um, – really understanding about what it meant to, to grow the business. Um, you can't, it's not going to grow on its own. You have to, uh, buy the fertilizer and buy the tools to, to do the planting, do the planting and all of that type yeah. of stuff. You can't get away with, uh, with, uh, small times type of stuff. And the money's not just going to come in through a fire hose, like all of the, all of the Instagram stories that you hear about <laughs> right. um, juice cleanse that, a million people bought. Not everybody. That doesn't happen to everybody. <laughs> right. Uh, well, and, and also when you see those incredible success stories, what you're not seeing is the amount of work and effort that went into automating all of that and setting that up, right? right. So I think there's, you know, that piece of helping people understand what Molly's talking about, this automation piece is actually what makes that um, sort of overnight or instant success possible. You know, you have to be ready to receive the flood of money and contacts and emails and everything coming in. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause if you're doing that manually, it wouldn't go viral in the same way. Yeah. yeah. I live inside an entreport every day. So <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. yeah totally know. So one last fun question. And then I want you to tell us how people can get in touch with you. And I know you have a free gift to share with everybody and um, where we can find out more. But my last fun question is what are you reading right now? What am I reading? Oh God. I read like four books at a time. Um, I'm reading The Entrepreneur's Solution by Mel Abraham. I'm reading, oh, I have one like right here. Uh, I just finished Ask by Ryan Levesque, which is yeah. fabulous if you want to survey your people. I'm reading, um, it's funny because I'm like putting books in a pile to decide what I'm going to bring. I'm doing research for a quiz that I'm building. So I'm reading a book on the tarot right now. And I'm also reading a book on nonviolent communication. Nice. Very cool. Are you reading anything like fiction, fun, total? Um, I am in the middle of uh, Shantaram and a book by Jody Pickolt. And, um, and now we're up to six books. I, yeah, I just do what feels right. And usually there's a couple on my bedside table. There's a couple in my car. And so wherever I am, I have a book with me. But yeah, I've been writing a lot more than reading lately because I'm in, I'm in creation mode myself. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful. I love it. And so where can we go to find out more about you or follow you? Yeah. On? yeah so first off, we'll give the link for our event that we're doing in LA, which is a bit.ly link, B-I-T dot L-Y slash creative freedom in action. And that's all lowercase letters. And then my website is Wild Hearts Rise Up, um, which we rise higher together. But Wild Hearts is plural, and then riseup.com. And then if you want a free gift from me, which is the Money Machine Blueprint, nice. the Wild Woman's Approach to Setting Up Your Heart Centered Sales Funnel, yeah. it's a proven eight step system to get this stuff started and get it put in place so that you can start finessing and making money from from um, the online business world. And that is another bit.ly link, bit.ly slash 
wild hearts with an S blueprint. Nice. Um, and that's all lowercase letters as well. Nice. And we'll put all these links in the show notes as well. So you can always find them on the show page from Molly's interview. And where do you hang out on social media? I spend a lot of time on Facebook. Yeah. I have a Twitter account. I do a lot of Instagram, but mostly um, I like posting and commenting and um, creating community on Facebook. And there's a Wild Hearts Rise Up Facebook group, correct? There's, so I just started a new Facebook group that I'm really loving and it's called Heartfelt Hustlers. So that's facebook.com slash groups slash heartfelt hustlers and any coaches and healers out there, I would love to have you in the group. Nice. Um, yeah, like there's heartfelt hustlers. There's good discussion happening there. I had a Wild Hearts, uh, Wild Woman Rise Up group and it's, it's there too if you'd like to join it. But um, Heartfelt Hustlers is more geared towards coaches and healers on a mission who want to change the world. Awesome. So much fun stuff. Molly, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, and we are looking forward to the event as well. And that's going to be fun. And listen, and you'll definitely, if you're on our list or you're listening to our podcast, you will hear more about that. (laughs) Yes, well, and that is Saturday, May 13th, location to be determined. But Molly, have a blast on your writing retreat, riverboat cruise, and your travels in Europe, and we can't wait to see you in May. Thank you, this was so much fun, thanks guys. Awesome, I'm Minette, this is Brad, we're the Path to Profit podcast, and we'll see you on the next episode, where we're gonna be just Brad and I, talking about deep work, one of our favorite books, and a process that we think everybody should be doing a lot more of in their creative business. Cool, thanks guys. See you later, bye.